A Dawes Butler is a better than an average bear. He's a dog with a southern accent, and he's one of the most famous voices in animation today. Hi, yeah, I'm Yogi Bear, and I'm smarter than the average bear. I'm Huckleberry Hound, and I just finished part of my autobiography. When I was a little old puppy dog, we used to have grits every day to eat grits. People used to say, you like grits? I'd say, well, I like grits a little bit. You're moving your lips. You should be able to take some kind of therapy for that and try to control it. Gee, <laughs> you're embarrassing me. Well, you know, Yogi, it's uh, not a question of embarrassment. I told you before, I'm not a ventriloquist. And when you talk, my lips move. Yogi Bear and Huckleberry Hound are only two of dozens of animated cartoon characters whose lips move when Dawes Butler talks. He is one of the best-known voiceover artists, someone you hear but never see, a talent that can make the diminutive butler into the world's only five-foot, eight-inch frog. And but this means I'm not a frog at all, but an enchanted prince. I'm just afraid you'll have to carry on as a duet instead of a trio, for I must seek my fortune in the outside world. I didn't feel that I had any particular talent. I wasn't a good student, really, and it was difficult for me to learn in an academic way. So there were amateur contests springing up on weekends and neighborhood theaters and nightclubs downtown in Chicago. And so I got up the courage to sign up. I had about three impersonations I could do. I think it was Rudy Valley, President Roosevelt, and a Model T Ford sitting on a coat. <laughs> Sounding like an old Ford starting on a cold morning and doing voice and facial impressions of stars of the 30s was a big jump for a young man who says he started out life inhibited. I did develop at an early age the, the realization that I was being drawn to people with talent. In other words, I could command more. The chameleon part of me was activated more by clever people. I felt more withdrawn with people with whom I couldn't communicate. I said, will you hold it down? Will you hold it down? Hold it down. Hold it down. Communication is important to Butler, not only through his voiceovers, but in a workshop he conducts for young people who would like to do what he does so well. Marjorie Dickerson fell down one day and never got up. It's actually a thin E, never. Now, this is where you get into more of the music. You mean to say? You mean to say? Very good. She fell down. She fell down. I never got up. I never got up. Never got up. And you don't put your tongue between your teeth. You don't. You That's don't. why you can't say think. You say, you can't you say you think, you say think. I, I think you're a beautiful girl. And I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little deal. It's in a delicatessen, and it's very easily opening. Now, you do number one, I'll do number two, okay? <clears throat> okay. You start. Uh, Anybody at this table? Don't do it. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Don't do it quite that broad. Let's do less, not more. All I want is the flavor, the dust and a moth's wing. Okay. Why are you tisk tisking? You don't like the bagel? Yeah, no, that, that was... Now, the second part was better to say, Why are you tisk tisking? I think if you hold the vowel once in a while, Why are you tisk tisking? Why are you tisk tisking? Cocky has a marvelous flavor. Once you fall into it, you never lose it. Will you thank dear Mrs. Hudson for the soup? It was delicious. Well, I will. I'm so sorry I fainted, Doctor. Okay, now that's very good. I'm so sorry I fainted, fainted. If you can caress the word a little more. I'm so sorry I fainted, Doctor. I'm so sorry I fainted, Doctor. That's it, a little more texture. Dawes Butler came to Los Angeles after World War II, and one of his early co-workers was the talented Stan Freeberg. The association produced humorous radio shows and some extraordinary comedy records. What you gonna do tomorrow, Joe? What you gonna do on Christmas? You got any plans? Nothing much. Why don't you come by the house, Joe? We're gonna have Christmas dinner. The missus always fixes a plate of relish with them little carrot sticks. You know, olives, pickles, scallions. Most folks call them green onions, but they're really scallions. Did you ever notice that, Joe? Ever notice what, Frank? Well, most folks call them green onions, but they're really scallions. Mm-hmm. About the same time, a man named Bob Clampett was producing one of early Los Angeles television's most successful kid shows, Time for Beanie. Dawes Butler was Beanie, and Stan Freeberg was the voice of Cecil the Seasick Sea Serpent. Uh, my wife made the first Cecil puppet, which was 
things they had around the house, like a couple of suction cups with the nostrils. And it was made out of an old terry cloth sleeve, which he dyed green. And she made a tongue, a red tongue inside. And that was just a, just a work puppet. Then she was going to make an elaborate thing for the real show. Nobody liked the big one that she made with the, with the horns and the this and that. So we went back and this little work puppet became a very famous character. For the last 20 years, Butler has been a vocal mainstay of the Hanna-Barbera cartoon studios. But even now, the famous voice gets some occasional coaching from legendary cartoon creator Joe Barbera. And there he goes! That's not, now that's that. He says, nice. next, it's the captain of the Scooby Doopies himself! <laughs> Right? Well, we, we can do uh, Hawk first as long as I'm on that line. Energy, I'm but sure. as always, for Dawes Butler, the payoff comes at the microphone. When all the years of work result in one of those familiar cartoon voices. Yay! Yeah. Who said anything about sleeping in a cave with a mosquito? Yeah, I'm smarter than the average bear. <laughs> 